Reload, please. Thank you. All right, now. Chill out. There's enough scatter blaster for everyone. Hello everyone, Thranx is here, and welcome back to No Man's Sky, episode 294, where we've just found a sunken wreck in the last episode, and ran out of time to check it, so we're going to go ahead and do that in this episode. And then I think, after that... Whether we get a frigate upgrade module or not, even though that is what we're hoping for, I think after that we're going to go ahead and do another super warp video where we try to make substantial progress towards the galactic center once again. I have yet to get the feedback for the last one that I did because I'm recording some of these episodes in tandem. Well, it's true, I don't want to race too far towards the end. I do want to make some substantial progress. Progress is starting to feel a little slow. Refill my... Mm, so it's doing the thing again where it won't refill my micro bubble gas pressurizer with oxygen. Why, I don't know. Seems like a thing that should be on my quick recharge. But it's okay. It's just a hop skip into the menu, so... Let's instead put good energy into the No Man's Sky universe to try to get another frigate upgrade module. Eventually, these two will become a thing that we're just over-chasing. At which point we can start uh, stealing them from freighters. That is so not what I want to do. I, 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 won't, I won't do it. I won't cave in. I won't allow myself to cave in. I just don't want to. No, instead I think we'd rather I'd rather hang out at the Nexus and just knock out a bunch of dailies and try to get it that way. But even that feels like we're taking the the beauty of the game and really just turning it into a grind. It should be something we do along the way as part of our journey. It gives us something to look forward to. I mean, realistically, when you land on a planet and you want to explore it, how do you determine what to look for? You gotta have a goal that you're going after, right? For us, it's salvaging wrecks. And I kind of like that that's become our de, our, our de facto mission. We're just gonna salvage the wrecks of the No Man's Sky universe, freighters and starships alike. I can get on board with that. I can feel good about that. I can end the video at the end of the day and say, you know what? That's the right decision. And and I won't even be upset about a couple of warp cells. I won't. I I would like to scan for a drowned starship once more though. Uh-huh. A hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Let's... Wow, look at these fish. Hold on. Is that a... Uh, it's challenging to stay under the water when you're trying to use your visor. I thought I saw something, yeah, that looked like, I don't know, some kind of structure, but really. It was just a hydrogen sulfide deposit. One of the vents. 
look at all those pearls and underwater caves. No, no, no. Stay, let's stay on task. I think the last time we saw a bunch of pearls, we deviated to get them. But this time, let's just go see what this ship has in salvage. And then I'm anxious to get another, another warp highway on. Thirty more seconds across the ocean. We find ourselves a smashed up starship drowned in the in the ocean. This is a high wealth economy, so it might be something really valuable. One can hope. I do not see a nearby island in that direction, so I am thinking we're gonna have to land over here. Okay, it's still a little ways away. Not too bad. Still a minute and a half by Nautilon. Could be working on the cytophosphate, I suppose. Might as well. gonna release the jellyfish. See, and that's gonna end up being a good argument for the Nautilon cannon, right? But they don't follow you for long, and I'm pretty sure they despawn after a while, so... How much of a problem are they to deal with, really? Hey, that looks like, what, what is that, a medium class? A, 27 plus 8, worth 4.6 million units. Yes. Terms accepted. Let's do it. Uh, well, first, let's talk to the beacon, I guess. Let's see what the beacon's gonna, going to give us. It's hard to tell just how long ago this craft crashed here. The pilot's reptilian body is fully decomposed, and the technology looks dated. The pilot's skeletal hand is clutching something. I've got to investigate, but a noise from the cargo hold distracts me. Oh, let me see what that noise is. Startled by a local beast somehow feasting on a device being transported in the hold. It smashes into me as it bolts. I gathered the cargo the creature failed to devour. B-class positron module. Not too shabby. That's nanites right there. Compare. Claim. There'll be no swapping. Oh, no, no, no. There'll be no swapping. All right, I got it. We got damaged critical items here. So let's... So we just, we need a hermetic seal. Uh, we're not going to repair the hyperdrive. We are going to repair the deflector shield. The forward delimiter we're going to break down. The efficient thrusters we're going to break down. Even the phase beam we're going to dismantle. Pretty good. Okay, let's start repairing all of this wonderful stuff. 400 paraffinium, I can accept those those terms. That's a little steep, but... Oh. Four wiring loom and three antimatter just doesn't feel uh, like a really good exchange. And I, I think it's silly given how resource-rich we are for me to really nickel and dime some of these things, but I feel like you have to have a line somewhere. And maybe I'm still, it's still a holdover where in my head I think that antimatter is more valuable than it is because we don't really need it as much. But I mean, if I'm going to spend 400 paraffinium on something, three times even, well, maybe we should just do it. 
Fine. It's done. We'll repair this one up all the way and just get the max value of it. We can always make more. Resources are for spending. It doesn't do us any good if we never spend them, right? So. And last but not least, ooh, activated copper. Really? And here I wanted to get the whole thing cleaned up. We could check to see if the other planets are extreme weather and have activated copper on them. I doubt they do, but... I could always check. Okay, that planet's just copper, and that one is just copper. Okay, no activated copper in the system. No problem. We, st we still did as much as we could. A couple extra cargo locate, you know, cargo spots. That's that could be pretty good. That could end up being pretty valuable. Because if you draw the line too many times. Say, well, this this one isn't worth it. 400 paraffinium isn't worth it. Then then you end up in a position where you have this really valuable ship and you've only repaired half of it. And we have the resources to do it. So I'm just trying to justify it in my head. I'm sure that everyone's already drawn their conclusion and either agrees or disagrees. But I would like to further convince myself sometimes. No, not really. At least, no longer. I like this mechanic of the game, though. I'm actually so excited that they added it. I, I enjoy finding crashed ships, and... I don't know why. I don't know why, but without the ability to sell them, you really could only look for crashed ships for a very small portion of the game, and then you had no reason to go and do it beyond just the gee whiz of it. And now, we get to sell the exhausted heroes into scrap. 3.2 million units. I accept these terms. Do it. Come on more good stuff. Keep the good stuff coming. Storage augmentation. That's uh, relatively acceptable, actually. What kind of modules do you have here? Oh, we've already looked at your modules. Well, then instead, how about I sell you my modules? Okay, thank you. Now, what is for sale here? First, let's sell our stuff. These thermal panels can go. Salt refractor. I don't really need to hang on to that. The hydrogen jelly. I mean, we can process it. Subatomic regulators. That's where the money was, right there. Okay, let's start putting some of this on the freighter. Um, these can go in our refiner. I don't really want to hold on to them right yet, and I don't want to stop what I'm doing, so... Let's hold on with these things, and we'll go dock with our freighter. And get ready for another hyper jump. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Over top of that fuel tank. Whoa. Be careful. Coming in for a landing.
We don't ever fly the squid ship. I should sell it. I don't know why I'm still holding on to it. It just looks so bizarre when it's flying with the tentacles facing forward. I feel like they should be facing backwards. Maybe not. That's... Ooh. It's a B34 plus 5. But look at it. It looks cool. A oh, little stubby wings, though. They don't have the, the big, long um, wings. Uh, I don't think we really need anything on our freighter other than the end of sleep. Which is exactly where we're going to put our launch fuel. Boop. And these warp cells can go on the freighter. Because the freighter does need fuel to warp still. Everything's looking good. Let's get ready to go. That's going to be our last jump for a hot second. My goodness, did we cross a lot of distance. I kept telling myself we'd stop just as soon as we got ourselves into combat, and the combat never came. It never happened. So, without further ado, now let's put the stats on the screen. What was the blink of an eye for you was about 25 minutes for me, and one warp core, although we're well under half of what the fuel is in our warp engine. Our current distance to the galactic center is 79,000. That's right, five digits worth of light years from the center. Very, very close. Seemed like a good a time as any to stop, because again, the combat was just never coming. So let's go ahead and land our freighter and switch on over to the Nightmare in Space. We'll hop on the Sword of Justice to get the Nightmare in Space. That's pretty cool. I just love stringing those names together. And then we'll bounce over to the space station and do our thing. You know, we'll grab some quests. We'll see what, what Exocraft modules are available. And then let's see uh, which planet in this system is worth a darn to visit. Ah, you know, a couple of uh, warp jumps like that, you really start to just totally understand the, the grand scale. I mean, you can look at the numbers, and just how many star systems are are in one of the one of the No Man's Sky galaxies, and multiply it by how many galaxies there are. You can you can look at all this stuff, but really warping around the map, you start to really appreciate the scale and a level just beyond knowing the numbers. Minotaur cannon, we don't need. Minotaur laser, uh, I think we need one more of those. At least I am fairly certain. Mm, do I want to see what they're selling at the Galactic Trade Terminal. We don't really need much. 
No, for now we're not going to do all of that. I should... Oh, for tritium and dihydrogen I should. Okay. Alright, change of plans. We'll scope out the... No. No, no, no. They have no nothing at all. Hello, Traveler Esapam. Alright, let's see what sort of missions we have available. Anything good? Kill two predators for nanites? Oh, please. Kill two predators for more nanites? Oh my goodness. Can we get just more of those? Envoy Ovoy? Or Ovi? Envoy Ovi. A mind control device. Oh, shoot. Well, we'll just go ahead and put that right on the capital ship. And uh, now let's switch our quest on over to this one. Because I don't want to see that crud on my HUD. Now, what sort of planets do we have here? the night side of this planet. It's a little difficult to make out. Oh, it's a magenta. Bountiful planet. Is that magenta water? Okay, well, we're just gonna hop to it. Those are definitely terms that I accept. Look at this. Oh, but it's storming, though. That's still pretty cool. Okay, so it's bountiful, but with bad weather. Can't win them all. The question is, is this all water beneath me? It appears so. Where might we find some land for which to land? Uh, that looks like land. Actually, that looks like a whole forest. A whole rainbow. Are we over land? No, these are islands. That grass isn't purple at all. And neither is the water. The water's red. We've been fooled. Incredibly low visibility. Let's break off of the water for one second, and let's just look at... It's a sustainable economy. Whoa. Hello. No. There's your picture. Right there. Let's go over to a land mass. Touchdown, get credit for the planet, and then I think we'll depart it. I don't mind the hot rain, but it really just crushes visibility, and I gotta get that vista. Alright, let's set let's set the nightmare and sleep down. Oh, and now the storm is clearing. Okay. Let's see. Weather says mostly calm. Not that calm. Not calm enough. Oh, back to back knowledge stones. Don't mind if I do. I'll grab a few of these. Corvax word for look. Oh, we got predators. Oh, a few of them. What is that? Oh, that's an abandoned building. Three different predators. No, they're from the same same species. Reload, please. Thank you. All right now, chill out. There's enough scatter blaster for everyone. 
I assure you. Oh, were you afraid I'd run out? No. No, I did not. Got some impulse beans. Another predator? Well, you shouldn't have. Another predator. This... This planet is... Just a wild, dangerous jungle. <gasps> Look at these little guys. Are you kidding me? What? What the heck? Oh, oh, there we go, there we go. There's your picture on the hilltop. Hello. How you doing? Let's take a look at the catalog on that. El Suknuchicha. Found on planet Onron Major, where they roamed both forest and grassland. Quick, darting eyes reveal their nervous habit. They're quick to make decisions and even quicker to take flight. They supplement their tuber-based diet with brightly colored flowers, the complex dye compounds providing a valuable micronutrient boost. Coincidentally, it also dyes their blood green. What a peculiar, bountiful planet. A very odd color scheme. The teal, the teal grass, very short grass. Magenta water and lavender skies. It's, it's interesting. I'll give it that. It's interesting. Let's do a flyby of some of the terrain now that the weather's cleared up. I guess there are some forests. They don't look that dense. They don't really look exceptionally dense. But the Discoveries page said they... They frequented forests, so... Let's pulse jump out of this planet's atmosphere and find some more. But what have we here? Contaminated blend with ancient bones. Eh. Oh wow, looking at this planet now, it doesn't look anything like it did from the shadowed side. Eh. Uh-oh. Frozen planet? Frostbound? Yes. What do we have here? Unknown moon. An acidic moon. That's the one we're looking for. Isn't it? A tropical planet, you say? I would like to go over to the day side of that Terminator, please. It's a longer than 30 second jump, so that's good. <gasps> Object of interest! Oh. That's not what I wanted. I got all excited. High Sentinel activity. It's not activated copper, so it's not an extreme planet. Alright, I think we've overshot our target. Well, oh yes. It's continental. It is. Blue water, green grass, green sky. It 
doesn't have hostile sentinels, the weather could still be pretty extreme. We'll just carve ourselves a path right through there. I hope you don't mind. But look at those land masses. Almost no lakes. Sometimes you get that fractal, that oceanic fractal design. Now let's clear out of these asteroids. That's what I'm looking for right there. The clean, Earth-like. We're home! Maybe not. I don't know. Perhaps we'll have to we'll have to swing down and see what stuff looks like. Okay, it looks sandy. I can't tell if it's just the atmosphere or if there's an actual storm happening. Um, yeah, it looks like a storm. Maybe. Well, maybe not. No, no, no storm. Just a little bit thick atmosphere. Interesting caves. Carved right through... Like rivers into lakes into caves? Incredibly flat. Look at how incredibly homogenous and flat the terrain is. Okay, we're going to change it up. Given that this planet is continental, I'd like to go to a deeper inland portion of the planet and see. Yeah. More, more towards the center of the continent. Just to see if that changes the terrain aspect of the planet. Yeah, look at this. There's hardly any water over here. It still looks fairly flat little caves and rivers torn out. No, okay, so we're into more rolling hills, but no mountains at all to speak of. Just permanent foothills and, oh, and little watery caves. How cool. Let's go ahead and set down. This planet deserves a little bit of our attention, I dare say. Oh, and it's got some knowledge stones. Yeah. That works for me. I accept these terms. The trees are... I don't want to say non-standard. The sky is not blue. We're just... We're splitting hairs here because really... This planet has a lot of character. This is really cool. It's almost like the leaves are permanently in autumn. Look at all the knowledge stones around. Yes, please. Oh, and the food items, really? Whoa. I didn't even look at the weather and the weather mostly calm. Flora, frequent, fauna, regular. There are a lot of knowledge stones here. Look at that terrain. It's ridiculous, isn't it? It's just verdant grassland as far as you can see. And then you got these giant caves. Systems carved down to the rivers. And a little resource depot down there.
Okay, well, pretty neat planet indeed. Glad we decided to stop and smell the roses right at this particular system. Uh, but I think in order to explore it further, we're going to have to pick it up in the next episode because we're out of time. So be sure to keep traveling, and until next time, take care.